Hello everyone, this is Rand here again, another episode of Fireman Simulator 2013. And we are playing on the Spring Hill Valley map for a 1,000 subscribers special. Like I said, just another 4 or 5 episodes or so total actually, so this is episode 3. Yeah, we'll probably do 1 or 2 more yet at least. Kind of play around a little bit. Anyway, I finished raking up this hay last episode, or after last episode actually. And now we need to bail it. And I should have asked you guys last episode uh, what bailer we should have used. I do have a few to choose from. And over to bailing technology. We got the Dukes Compact Master. I think most of these produce the uh, four foot bales. Obviously got the, uh, it's not really in-game, it, it comes from Farming Sim, though. Yeah, that, that's way too big for this map. Got the John Deere. We got a Coon. Uh, I'm using that one on the Iowa map. I think that's, oh, and I do have the McHale as well. That's also another nice bailer. We got a small John Deere down here. The only issue with this is I'm not sure how you'd go about picking these up, so. Actually, you could probably pick them up, I Bet and they pick up with one of these trailers. Have to get the right one here. I think this is an auto loading one. I'm not sure how you get that down this map though. And then there is another. I think this is the other auto loading one. Yeah, this one's really big though. That's the one we're using on the Iowa map. Well, it'd be kind of fun to use this little paler. It'd actually be perfect for this map, but not exactly sure how I'd get the bales back. Now, you know what? Let's let's try it and see once what uh, kind of damage we can do with it. Not that I really needed to go anywhere with the bales, because we're not, you know, going to be playing a whole lot on this map, so. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the official route to this back field is, because this little path here pretty much leads to this field over here. I, uh, maybe it's, it's probably down through there, maybe that's where we're supposed to go, I'm betting. Yeah, you can really turn sharp with a speed roar, by the way. That's one nice thing about it. Ah, eh, we'll just take a shortcut through the cornfield here. Since we're headed this way already, the shop, I believe, is over on the other side of that hill there somewhere. I have to say, they definitely put a lot of time and effort into this map. A lot of detail. I know I've said that already, but... Definitely a very well, highly detailed map. Yeah, these bridges are positively wicked, though. That's the only thing. Stuck on these things is a uh, pain in the butt. The only thing I just happen to think about with this bail, I might have to actually tether it. I'll have to find out, I guess. The uh, biogas plant is back this way as well, I noticed. Yeah, this tractor drives, normally this tractor doesn't drive this slow. It's actually, I think it goes like 
20 mile an hour, something like that. But on these roads, it only goes 10. So, not sure why that is. But apparently it must have like a speed limit on these roads. Personally, I find that really annoying. Like, I'll go whatever speed I decide to go at. And, uh, yeah, I'll take care of the consequences when it happens. I think this is actually a pop baler. That's what I always call them anyway. Uh, pop baler, they are the ones that'll pop them up into a wagon. Just gonna dump out on the ground, I'm assuming. I believe this is uh, in game, if I remember correctly. That's uh, provided by Farming Sim, that is. Okay, and I'll pause the recording here. We'll be back once I'm at the field, then. Okay, and we're almost back to the field here. Took a little bit different route up through that uh, one path there that uh, was by the shop. That didn't have the speed limit on it, so that went a lot quicker coming back than it did coming here, or going there, I should say. Okay, I'm assuming this thing needs to be folded out. Yep. Whoa, that's, <laughs> that's an interesting fold out. And we'll lift Baylor. I'm not entirely sure what that is proven there. That's weird uh, lifting. Anyway, let's turn it on. Yeah, we're going to have to tether this, aren't we? I was afraid of that. That's fine. We can uh, use this thing in the tether mode then. Assuming it's probably in the rake mode yet. I'm not sure if that uh, saves that or not. Let's see. Tether mode. N. Basically going to straighten it out is what it's going to do so it can uh, throw the hay around a little more rather than actually raking it. That might be fun to hook up. Let's see, maybe if I give it a whack on the back here. It's actually stuck in the wall there. Okay. Maybe if I set it back to the... We had it there. Back to wind roll mode. Maybe it'll straighten that out. Yes, it will. Okay. Let's pull it away from the wall before we do that again then. And put it on tether mode. Not sure how this is going to spread it out, if it's going to spread these windrows way out. If it does, maybe I'll go with a little bit different option then. Okay, and then turn it on. Let's see, i got to be on this side, which is K. Okay. 
Yeah, it looks like it's gonna spread it way out. Which I really don't want, and seeing how I do have another rake I can use that will prevent that from happening, I'm gonna go with that route. And we'll be back in a minute then once I uh, get that from the store. Okay, everyone, we're back from the store again, and this time I got another rake. This one that won't uh, spread it out, and it will tend it at the same time. The New Holland, I believe this is, yeah, this is a New Holland rake, yep. Uh, this is another common type of rake you will uh, see in my area, anyway. A lot of farmers still actually use this type of rake yet, at least the smaller ones, anyway. You know, pretty much works on the same principles as the wheel rake over there, just not near as big. Basically turns the uh, windrows over, allows them to dry, and allows you, you know, to combine combine rows as well. I don't think we can get these close enough together to actually make another... Yeah, it's not even going to be close to really get them close enough together. Probably would have worked if we hadn't windrowed them already together. Then it would actually probably would have combined the two that the mower produced together. And, you know, technically the way Farming Sim does this here really isn't that uh, realistic. You know, real life it's pretty much a waiting game for this hay to dry out. You gotta give it a depending on how dry you go and depending on how dry it was when it was cut. You know, you gotta give it a couple days usually at least. Depending on what you're doing with it anyway. But for normal baling you give it a few days to dry out, then you can bale it up. Don't want to bale it green like this. Okay, that's probably pretty good, these two rows here. Then we might grab another bale or do the other ones or something. And then, I gotta figure out what we could do to pick these bales up. And I am recording this video quite a bit earlier than I normally do. Got a uh, day off work today, so I'm actually recording this fairly early in the morning. The other video has gone live not that long ago, so I don't have, don't think there's any comments on it yet. Or if there is, there's probably not very many. Let me put it that way, at least. Okay, looks like it's folded already. Just need to turn it on. And we should be able to bail this time. Yeah, there it goes. Ooh, that's got a narrow pickup too, don't it? There, looks like our first bale that just appeared there. No, we're not actually going to get as many bales as I thought we would off this here. You know, it's a small field, so... 
I was picturing a lot more bales in this. Which is why I was a little hesitant to uh, choose this particular bale. Yeah, typically how you'd probably do it with this bale, you'd uh, grab a bale wagon, like, I think it was, where was that again? I think it was actually bus or above, yeah, above this one, grabbing you know, a bale trailer like this, hook it up behind this baler. You'd have a person driving the tractor and at least another person or two on the bale trailer there, grabbing these bales as they came off the baler and stacking them on the trailer. A nice, fun, hot job, you know, in the middle of summer. You'd have a baling party. I'm not sure about the party part of the baling, but, uh, Yeah, I think that white flash you see every now and then, I don't know if it's uh, showing up on the video. I'm assuming it is. I think it's from the exhaust on this tractor, the cycle of the animation, I think is what's actually going on there. It's what's up with that white um, flash you see every now and then. That is quite a few bales yet. Another option yeah, I've seen in my area as well, sometimes you have a special trailer that will actually connect up to the back of this and the baler will push them up like a little ramp that actually goes into the trailer and then they just kind of all fall down inside the trailer. And yeah, again, this baler, or this type of baler anyway, is still fairly common in my area. Although a lot of times, yeah, you will see them using some type of automatic loading method, like the, either a pop bale that actually throw the bales up in the wagon, or some type of ramp dealio, or actually loading the bales, or having the baler itself push the bales into the wagon. that last bale out of there. There we go. Okay, let's shut the baler off. And I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to grab the mixing wagon, bring the mixing wagon over here, and then we can throw the bales into it directly. It is not the mixing wagon. There's the mixing wagon. Old rattle trap looking uh, mixing wagon with what looks to be a CD player there. Somehow I doubt it. You guys watch, it'll probably, as soon as I get to this road here, it'll actually probably slow down. Actually, you know what? I need to go the other way.
Oh, scary. <laughs> Another person in here, apparently. Not sure what that is going on behind his seat there. I probably shouldn't be taking the time to look, because I'll probably end up crashing into these walls. And it does seem like these walls have, like, sticky glue on them or something. You crash into them, and you're stuck there. Doesn't look like we have any special functions on this or anything. Any, no IC yet, no IC. Nothing fancy. Definitely looks old though. That's interesting, that does have marks in there. So fill it up to that level with grass, then silage, then straw. I don't have any uh, silage, so we'll just do the grass. Don't even have any cows, so it doesn't really actually matter. Okay, what type of uh, equipment do we want to find for loading this now? Tractor's linkage, that's probably a three-point then. Lost my mouse again. Keeps wandering off. Uh, that is for the round bales, but I'm wondering if it would work. Looks like it's for a three-point, though, again. Uh, round bales, round bales. Mostly all round bales. These would be for square. I think, yeah, I've got a couple more down here. Again, they're all... Pretty much round bales and larger bales. So I think we're going to be best off with... with what comes with the bobcat here. And that is going to be the bale spike, I believe. I don't think there's anything... Yes, just the bale spike will do. Reset that. And this is the T-180. I believe the other Bobcat's the T-160. That one's got the wheels on it. And this one has tracks. Uh, Euro DZN released this, I believe, oh, probably a month or so ago, something like that, I think it was. Thought about uh, grabbing it for the Iowa map. Eh, maybe we will yet. Uh, no, it just seems a little small for that map. I don't know why, but it just looks small to me. This is the number of bales and stuff we're handling. Now that that bobcats are really small, they're actually uh, quite powerful little... I don't know what you'd call it, bobcats, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say, they're not really a tractor, but... Not really a front end loader either, really. Uh, hopefully this uh, fork will actually lock these bales. They're not too small that I won't detect them. Ah, well, excellent. I wonder, can I actually lock two of these? What? No, why not? All depends whether the lock script will handle two or not. That's going to be the only really question. And only handle the one. Okay. Oh, that's a pity. You know, if I can find probably like a good bale spike and just one single spike, I might be able to get uh, two of them on it. We gotta get pretty close to this thing. I 
bet and we probably have to turn it on. Unless maybe it doesn't detect these types of bales. That's never know. Oh, they got the little uh, Euro DZN key fob there hanging there. Don't think the other one has that. Maybe it does. I just don't, or haven't uh, used it for a while. Oh, that one's going to fall out. Maybe we better uh, see if we can uh, mix those up. That's interesting. Maybe it actually wants grass and not ah, it says hay up there. Well, doesn't look like that's gonna work. I'm not entirely sure why. The only thing I can think of is it maybe doesn't like these little round bales. That's uh or the problem is little square bales. It's the only thing I can really think of off the top of my head. I know I've tested this before and dropped some bales, the larger, uh, the large square bales, uh, in-game square bales, that is, in here, and it worked, so. Yeah, there's no option to turn it on. Interesting. Oh, well. Well, there it is. Uh, doesn't work with these bales, apparently, or maybe it doesn't work, period, now. No idea. Go figure. Anyway, kind of done uh, messing with that anyway. I was just going to dump those in there, take it back to the farm, and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it from there. Actually, where does this unloaded act? Ah, on this side, okay. Comes out this side, apparently. It is a rather nice-looking truck, uh, if you're looking for an older one, anyway. Happened to see that a while back. It's like, ooh, that's a nice old-looking one. Anyway, let's uh, go back and do a little harvesting here. We'll finish up the episode. And there is a field of... Is that potatoes or... That... Uh, is that... I'm not sure if that's sugar beet or potatoes there. Oh, I think that's yeah, got to be sugar beets, and this one down here is potatoes from the looks of it. That's a little bit lighter, and that one's a little bit darker. So I figure next episode we'll probably come and do that. Oh, going too fast again. You gotta remember it's uh, speed one with this common. That's actually the right speed. Yeah, and this field's not even harvested, so... Or not... Not harvested. It's not fertilized. So we're actually uh, harvesting. We're not getting as much as we possibly could. It's one of those things where you know, you, you know what you want to say, but what you actually say and what uh, you are saying are two different things. Kind of weird with this combine too, the cab is actually offset, so got a farther distance to that head over there versus here. 
It's actually the way a lot of the older John Deere combines that I have seen are. Got the cab offset to one side. I think pretty much all the newer ones nowadays are in the, the middle, I believe. Not quite the right header for this combine, but it does fit fairly well. And like I said before, the reason I chose it is because it's the only one that I actually found that actually attached to it properly, properly on the front there. At least of the smaller heads I have anyway. I didn't try any of the, like, the larger heads. That, that would have just been ridiculous, I thought. So, didn't even bother going there. Anyway, with that, folks, I think we'll uh, call it an episode there. Uh, we'll come back next episode and probably do that sugar beet field over there. And then the episode after that, I was thinking the potato field. So if folks have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.